So you need to find a lens for making a camera and you could use an old camera lens but as you know that's only going to be the size of the format of the film 24 by 36 millimeters. Loads of single element lenses out there and you may as well just uh, find one and make it. It's quite exciting as a little adventure. Some lenses however don't work and I'm just going to give you an example of a few. They come in different strengths. If you see that on it it says 3.5 diopters. Now that will focus. There it is about there. It's actually 33 millimeters that will focus infinity. So it's not bad, it's a little bit on the small side. Some lenses, a pair of glasses, work quite well. And I think this one's really cool. It's quite big, there's a lot of light in, and you can see it focusing at about 30 centimeters there. So you could write 30 centimeters on, on that. Others don't work at all, and that's because the diopter's too weak. Okay, just experiment with them. Other lenses you've got, right, we're going to go through a few. This is a little round Fresnel lens, um, which was it's quite fun. I quite like that. Focuses nice and close, which is good, about sort of 15 centimetres. So you could use that. A bit plasticky. Other plasticky lenses, well, they're never going to be as good a quality as glass. Here we are. There's another one that's focusing at about 20 centimetres. Then we go into the real McCoy. I like this one. This is a, it's quite long. It looks like it's a very nice sharp lens, uh, about 30 centimetres. However, it's a fairly small diameter, which means that like, it won't be too difficult to focus it. It won't be a shallow focusing plane. Then we have another big one. Look at this. That'll be really, my family really sulk after that when they're looking for nits or whatever. Sorry. Um, <laughs> they don't, honest, but that focuses really nice and wide. Again, you're talking about building a camera with a big lump of metal on the front, but that's okay. And then we get to other things we've found. This here is nice. This is an old bit of an old condenser, it's an enlarger. Again, 20 centimetres. It's big, but, you know, whatever. And this one has its own little mount in it. So, yeah, focusing this. Wonderful fun. So, get yourself a lens, yeah? doesn't have to be complicated. Single element would be fine. And then you can start building your camera. But, well, I'm going to show you uh, a few different types of cameras that you can actually find, which uh, some of which are useful for doing time exposures with paper, and some of which aren't, some of which are no use whatsoever. Just give you an example in case you're not too aware of different sorts of cameras around there. Uh, there was a time when manual shutters and manual exposure stuff was uh, king, and that meant that, like, you know, there's some sort of reliability. Then there was a period of time, about 20, 30 years before digital, really, about 20 years before digital, where the camera battery manufacturers basically wanted to make as much money as possible. They had auto wind, auto rewind, auto exposure, automatic shutters, blah, blah, blah. Most of them really aren't very reliable these days. Uh, they're not great. So you're really looking for some manual camera. But we'll go through a few pros and cons of things. Starting off with different formats, this is a really silly thing. This is the sort of film that I fit inside my mouth, but I don't use the outside stuff. Uh, a 110 cartridge, now uh, even the Pentax 110 won't work. So any instamatic -y sort of box won't have a time exposure or any real control. Forget them. There's another one here. Mm. 126 cartridge, fantastic format, absolutely superb film format. Don't make it anymore. Um, but again, just one, take the photo and that's it. The film was designed to cope with over and under exposure. And another one as well, the old instamatic. So those are cameras that if you see them lying around there's no way you can do time exposures with them unless you wedge the shutter open which you could do you could take the whole thing apart and wedge the shutter open just put a bit of tape on and off but life's too short then we get to sort of more manual cameras but they've still got some sort of automation this is a thing called a pen ee2 look at that god this is geeky isn't it oh i look good like that so i'm doctor who uh that's the automatic shutter now um Again, no controls. It has different shutter speeds within it. I think it's free, but there's no B. There's no way you can do a time exposure. So that's not of any use. Sorry. And then the Olympus Trip, which people also think is a really good camera. I'm no great fan myself. And they don't seem to work too well now. Um, again, no way of doing a time exposure with those. And then we get to the modern stuff. Things like this. This is all the Olympus Mu, and they're fantastic. But as you can see with this, even, you know, need to get a new battery. And there's no controls over it. Um, 
pity because it's a really nifty little camera. That's really cool. I quite like those at the time. So what cameras can we use? Well, um, starting off with, let's say, 35mm. Um, I don't happen to have any little 35mm compacts at the darkroom, which is a shame. So I'll show you, first of all, the SLR that I'll be using, which is my old Pentax MX. And it's got a shutter here, a way of being able to press the shutter down, lock it, shutter stays open, unlock it, shutter code. So you don't need a cable release. And it's got all the shutter speeds. Just use a B and that's fine. And old manual SLRs, brilliant. There's a few of them here. Practica, yeah. Click, click. That will be the cable release you should put in there. Yeah, but you just sort of like can use that, no problem. And even something as a uh, historical and chieftain tank as uh, an old Zenith 3B. And this one here is just absurd, but oh, you put it in, you can actually lock the shutter just about. Um, look at that thing, look at it. Oh, wow. East oh, Russian manufacturing at its best. So, other cameras you can use. Let me just show you a few of these. Anything like this. Yeah, lovely thing. This is about 1928, and that's got a T setting on it, where, I'll show you about that, and you press the shutter down once, Shutter open, shutter down again, shutter closes, no need for cable release. Then the old end sign. There you go. Again, it's just got one shutter, really. And the shutter speed here, you can actually look at it here, is open and close. Let's see if we can make this work. Let's open, close. Actually, no, that's the shutter. Okay, let's see if we can make this work. Shutter open. Shut closed. Brilliant. So that's got a T setting on it as well. Nice little box. And then you can start making your own. And we've given you the bits and pieces for using a little Fresnel lens in a shoebox. There we are. Nothing much at all in there. That'll work, bizarrely enough. Chuck that over there. And last but not least, building cameras around lenses like this thing. This is an old reconnaissance lens from an airplane. A World War II bomber, and uh, if you look in there, it's actually got the aperture that works as well. Uh, you probably can't see it, but it's a wonderful thing. Look at it. Uh, I still haven't really maximized the use of this, but it's designed for doing long exposure, really painful portraits. Um, and it focuses at 115 centimeters away. And it's just a, I've stuck it onto a box, which you can take the paper out and put it back in again. So there we go. There are the sort of cameras you can use. Um, again, it's a bit geeky, but like, see what you've got out there. Anything really very old will do. I know. Right, the first camera we've got loaded here is an Ensign from 1928. It's got two exposures. It's got a T setting and a sort of 15th. That's in about 20 minutes it's had so far. Lovely old thing. A uh, little carrying handle and stuff and some interesting adverts in. Very common. Loads of these around. But very tricky to use because I think they used old uh, 220 or 128 or something film. Anyway, difficult to find the old spools is what's tricky. Then we have what I used to use at university. Uh, Pentax MX, which is a very lovely lightweight camera, but the lenses were pretty rubbish. However, this has got a 24mm Tamron very wide and uh, works very well even though the lens is sticking it doesn't matter with this sort of long exposure stuff and it's got a doesn't need a cable release because it's got a lock on it and the last camera here is the brownie again 1928-29 and it's got the formal T setting it's also got a B and a shutter somewhat so there we go and the subject it's looking at is my interpretation, the 21st century interpretation of Fox Talbot's broom next to open door. But it's a Dyson because, uh, yeah, well, you know, I like keeping up with the times. But that's the sort of one of the earliest pictures that William Henry Fox Talbot went and did um, and uh, was basically the first negatives. So that's brilliant. And I thought it was slightly funny. I like slightly funny.